Thank you so much for coming to our demo. Um, I just want to start by introducing myself. My name is Marnish Sumeki and I lead the evaluation and our external AI governance partnerships here in Azure AI Foundry. And I'm super excited because this demo is going to be different. We have two wonderful leading AI governance companies with us in the house. Miri and Vera from SciDot, Navrina, Alec, and Eric from Credo AI. We're super honored to have you and we're super excited to showcase our integrations with both of you. Uh, the idea of this integration is AI, um, Azure AI Foundry provides evaluation package for you to be able to evaluate quality, safety, and performance of your generative AI applications and AI agents. However, one thing that was missing, and that was the AI system governance around these evaluations and a layer to really inform us what evaluations need, we need to run and where those evaluations need to be surfaced. So AI developers who hang out on Foundry and compliance officers and auditors who hang out on these AI governance companies could do the handshake and truly make sure that um, they have the right communication in place. And so I first start with SIDOT. Thank you so much for being here and please take it away with a demo of your platform. Thank you, Anush. Thanks, uh, and great to be here. Um, my name is Mary Hauter. I'm CEO and CPO at SIDOT. Uh, but in this demo, um, okay, let's, screen is fine, yeah. So in this demo, I will be uh, uh, AI product owner uh, uh, in my financial services company uh, HR department. And I will show you, um, it's my responsibility as a product owner to make sure that uh, my AI governance uh, or governance of my own product uh, follows really the company's uh, AI governance process and policies. So for that reason, I've been already uh, registering uh, my new system that, uh, that the team is building. Uh, it's an uh, help chatbot uh, to support employees find a, uh, HR-related policies information um, uh, easier. So I have registered the system in the inventory on SIDOT, um, provided uh, some basic information about this system and its uh, purpose. And now I'm really uh, getting started with risk management of this system. So uh, uh, really, uh, uh, let's have a look how does it happen uh, on, the, on the product. And first thing, uh, I know that in this uh, context, we're using OpenAI's model uh, GPT-4 Omni Mini uh, uh, to implement this service. So I will just start by uh, linking this system into, uh, into this model that I have in the, in the model catalog on, on side at side. This is what is, uh, uh, I have already uh, integration to Foundry and I have uh, visibility to the models that the team is uh, really using to build uh, different uh, applications and let's, um, Let's um, uh, um, sorry. Okay, there it is. Answer employee questions about HR policy. So question answering is is a task that I'm interested uh, about here. And now you can see the uh, system is now linked to the model in model catalog, uh, directly retrieved uh, from Foundry. And uh, you see that uh, also the data set that uh, is linked to this uh, specific. Uh, deployment uh, is uh, inherited uh, to this system. Uh, I will start by looking a little bit into this model in the model catalog. So we bring information from uh, Foundry, uh, uh, OpenAI services to, uh, to CIDA to uh, have visibility what is the status there. There is space model information deployment. But what I'm most interested in here is the uh, pre-populated risks. So CIDA provides from a model library information about the risks that the provider OpenAI has communicated to be part of uh, or related to using this model. So, uh, so I will start my risk management by looking into these uh, inherited risks uh, from the model. So let's go back to my, uh, my system. Uh, where I just added this one and I see that also the risks are now inherited uh, to my uh, system and use case that is using this deployment uh, specifically. So now we have defined uh, the deployment, we have the task that is relevant for this specific system and we have the risks that are inherited from this, uh, this deployment and model uh, to this system. So we are ready to get started uh, with evaluations and really uh, through the technical evaluations we really want to provide uh, visibility into uh, what is the likelihood of these risks in the context of my system. Uh, and for that, uh, CIDOT automatically generates me evaluation plans that are relevant 
for this specific context of using this model. I can see from here that now uh, we automatically got eight different evaluation plans for this system, considering this uh, uh, information about the task. So we have a bunch of quality uh, evaluations uh, looking into question answering task and different, different capabilities. All of these are linked also to, to uh, Cited Risk Library. So uh, we can see to which risks we can use these different evaluators and evaluations as evidence. I also have a couple of uh, red teaming evaluations uh, suggested for me, and I'm now diving into one of these. I'm really uh, a little bit concerned about the harmful content related to, uh, to this service. So, so I will uh, just get, get started activating this evaluation plan. And from here, uh, I can see the context uh, context that is coming from my system for this evaluation, the risks that are uh, uh, linked to this, uh, this specific case, and then uh, what evaluations, what risks we can uh, uh, evaluate this or get evidence for, uh, for. I also see the data set requirements that are required for this specific evaluation to be uh, uh, successfully run in Azure side, and then have options how to generate uh, evaluation data set for, for my uh, evaluation. I don't have a data set now for this one, so I'm really happy to be able to use the opportunity to simulate data set for, uh, for this use case. So let's go on and, and use the uh, Azure capabilities for simulated uh, adversarial da uh, data sets. Now I will just go and pick my, uh, let me see, project ID from Foundry to connect the results uh, to this specific project, and now I'm ready to generate the notebook. So really, uh, while generating, uh, we really want to uh, make the make the notebook almost ready for uh, executing uh, in Azure side. So um, so now we have uh, that ready. We can download that and finish the the activation of this um, this. Um, um, this uh, evaluation plan. So let's have a look at the uh, notebook and really the idea here, I will not go into, into details, but we've uh, used everything that we already know from you, uh, subscription IDs, like the connections, project uh, names. Um, we select uh, the risk categories for this, uh, these evaluations. We have the attack strategies and, and there is also identifier that helps you connect the uh, results then from Azure side uh, to sided evaluation plans. Uh, so now uh, the team can uh, run this evaluation, sorry, wrong browser, uh, run this evaluation then um, and we can see that this uh, activated evaluation plan is now pending reports. So whenever the uh, team has run uh, these evaluations then in Azure side, I will jump to uh, other, other version of this where we have already free run evaluation. So every run in Azure side uh, creates a, a new report inside that is connected to the specific uh, evaluation plan and we can go on and, and uh, see how the results look like for this specific evaluation. You have all the details about the uh, plan and also this, uh, this specific um, uh, report on the left hand side and from here I can see uh, how does it uh, uh, perform related to these um, four different um, evaluators, violent content, self-harm content, uh, hateful, unfair content and sexual content. Uh, uh, attacks and now it looks to me that there is a little bit work to do in the uh, hateful and unfair content side and, and uh, that is something that I would, I would then um, ask the team to look into safety filters there. We, uh, after being able to, um, or after running the evaluations then based on the changes that have been done, uh, um, for example adding content filters or, or other, other technical controls, we can then compare the results and see that we were able to do a little bit impact, but maybe some more uh, tuning is needed uh, to, uh, to really uh, make this production ready. Uh, with this really, uh, we want to uh, make the workflows between the data scientists, AI teams, and then uh, compliance like in a super easy and, uh, and um, generate the evaluation plans ready for clients so that you can, uh, you can they are execute, execution ready, uh, generate notebooks that are not just examples, but really are ready for execution and bring the results back, populate the evidence then to risk management and compliance processes inside it. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right, let's invite our other amazing partners, Credo AI. Eric, I'm super excited for you to show us 
what this integration entailed. Yeah. Let's go to your computer. Absolutely. Uh, thank you so much, Manoush. Um, hi, everybody. My name is Eric Aldana. Uh, I'm a product lead at Credo AI. And today I'm excited to show you uh, how this exciting integration between Credo AI and Azure AI Foundry uh, really bridges the gap between governance requirements and developer workflows to help you ship AI applications faster with the highest degree of trust. So over the next few minutes, I'm going to demonstrate how this integration creates a seamless experience where governance feels like a natural part of your development process and not an obstacle to it. So before we dive in, let's quickly understand why this matters. So the AI landscape is becoming increasingly complex, right? In addition to increased investment in AI, as well as the you know, awesome new agentic capabilities that we've been seeing over the last couple of days right here at Build, uh, we're also seeing more high profile AI incidents affecting public trust, uh, as well as businesses' own confidence in their AI strategies. We're seeing a global increase in laws and regulations, uh, with some estimating that in the next couple of years, uh, AI governance is going to be a part of every sovereign legal and regu regulatory framework. Um, and most concerningly, probably something that impacts you all, uh, we're seeing a majority, around 60% or so, of AI projects failing to move past the POC stages because of governance challenges. Um, so these aren't just abstract problems, right? They're directly impacting uh, your ability to build and ship products uh, that make the world and our lives better. So the core challenge we see here is that AI governance and development, they exist in two different worlds, right? Separated by language, tools, and priorities. We have the governance teams who think about policies, risks, uh, business objectives, and meanwhile, developers and product owners, uh, they're focused on components of building those products, right? Uh, what are the models, the data sources, and the pipelines that are addressing specific problems uh, with specific contexts? So this creates a conversation between these two groups where answers to critical questions are often lost in translation. Questions like, what risks and policies apply to my AI solution? What evaluations do I need to run to understand risk? Uh, how do I know those evaluations are good? How do I keep up with changing requirements? Um, so that's why we built the Credo AI platform. Um, and it might be a little corny, but you can think of us as the API between uh, your governance and your development teams uh, to enable trusted AI adoption. So our platform creates a closed loop solution where you can register your AI solution and key information about it, like what's its purpose, who's being impacted by it, uh, where is it being deployed. Uh, second, the platform will automatically generate a contextualized governance plan based on known regulatory frameworks, uh, industry standards, as well as your organization's own policies and business goals. Uh, next, the platform will provide easy instructions uh, for product owners and developers to execute that governance plan with familiar tools uh, like Azure AI Foundry's evaluators uh, right from the comfort of your IDE. And finally, interpretable results from that plan will flow back to both teams, enabling continuous alignment and the ability to respond to any changes that might occur in either policy or technology. So this all sounds great, um, but I want to show you how this actually works in practice. So here I'll start off in the Credo AI platform, where I can take that first step of registering an AI use case. So let's go ahead and add this uh, retail chatbot that I've been working on that we all know from this conference. Uh, uh, one stop shop assistant to answer employee questions. Great, and here's where we can provide additional information about this use case, right? Is it incorporating generative AI? Um, if we know what models uh, are being used with this solution pulled right from our Foundry instance, we can select that, identify the region that it's in, and even what is the potential value of this, uh, of this use case. Great. So from there, we can go ahead and complete a questionnaire uh, for uh, to provide the platform with a little bit more information about our use case. Uh, for this demo, I'm going to focus on a couple of things, right? So maybe content safety. Has the system been tested to ensure uh, content is discriminatory uh, or biased, or it's not those things? Let's go ahead and say no. And let's also measure something like performance. So um, I, is there a process for auditing content generated from external data to ensure factual accuracy? Let's say we haven't done that yet. So based off of just this, this limited information, let's see what the platform can provide for us. So we'll submit that, and let's take a look at the governance plan. 
So here we can see that looking at our, our plan, the system has identified some transparency requirements that might be related to the EU AI Act. Um, and additionally, the platform is showing risks for uh, false or misleading information, as well as toxic content. Uh, so now what you probably care the most about, what do I need to do now? Well, that's easy. Um, when you open these requirements, you'll see the necessary governance requirements uh, translated into ready-to-use code snippets that you can run in your development environment. Uh, so for this groundedness evaluator control, you'll get a Python snippet that will include a configuration to run the required evaluator. You simply just need to fill in your details to connect it with your Foundry project, uh, which might be something like this. And then you can just go ahead and copy and paste that code into your IDE, run it, and then that evaluator is going to be running. Um, we'll be able to track it here in Foundry, but then also the information is going to be pushed right into the Credo AI platform, where you can see uh, you know, what the, uh, what the uh, results of the evaluation was, as well as whether or not it actually meets the acceptable range that you've set as part of your governance plan. So here today we've shown you know, uh, what a process could be to identify what the risks uh, and requirements for governing AI effectively looks like and allowing these two different parties, right, the developers and the AI governance leads, to uh, communicate with each other seamlessly. So thanks so much uh, for your time and uh, please oh, read right. for more information.